Hopefully the, the battery doesn't run out. Okay. We just can't help bringing something about a garden to to us because a garden is such a special place, isn't it? Our garden, if I think about our garden, about, I can go back 80 years plus these days. Hang on, hang on, hang on. It's a very sensitive mouse. <laughs> when I was a kid, and you go back for many, many years, you fought insects like mad, didn't we? We killed every insect which was anywhere near the, our garden, except the ants. And Mum used to smash them on the on the concrete with a slipper because the ants were getting. And so ants and insects ate, ate your veggies, your cabbages, your tomatoes. They were always always fighting them with uh, DDT and dildren and all sorts of lovely stuff. It's a wonder we're still alive, isn't it? I think nowadays we run an insect hotel, or is it a motel? There's just about a sign on our gun that says, come along chaps, we want you to come and visit us and we'll take your photo. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we grow plants so that they do come. Yeah, that's right. We especially, if we say every one of our plants is a welcome plant. And we know there's some plants in the garden which just will not touch an insect, an insect won't touch them because the plant is too foreign or it's a... I don't know, it's a milk sap plant. Are they a milk sap plants toxic? Most probably. Most probably, yeah. They, they, they smell like it. And uh, so, so you, you know, over the years, we've... And I'll tell you what, this is a secret. I'm gonna have, you have to blame Jean for everything about insects. Because I never saw an insect, except the ones that were a nuisance. Jean is the one who's introduced us to me, the insects. I never knew they existed, except the... The, the, the ferals that came in, the nuisance ones, like ants. <laughs> it's been broken. <laughs> Two nights. And so, and so in, in reality, I think one of the nicest things that happened was that when, uh, over the years, Jean got her own camera. Before camera was, that was all the guy's job, but Jean got her own camera. And it was amazing what Jean photographed and saw wherever she went. While we're doing plants for Parks and Wildlife, Jean had her head down in the bushes looking for insects and photographing them, things I've never seen. I used to get in trouble. Come on, what are you doing that for? You're supposed to be doing the plants. Well, well that's, that's, right. that's what we, I was going to say plants, that's what we got paid for. No, we never, we were always <laughs> volunteers. We never got paid a, bar, a bean for it. <laughs> so really, Jean, Jean sort of helped, to, helped me to sort of get a bit of, sort of get to like insects too. We both get to work and photograph them and share them around. And we now have, um, we just, yeah, we do, we do collect for the science world. And we just, uh, just last, we've just in at the early part of this year, we finished our 15,000 specimens mm -hmm. into the museums in, both in Canberra and, and Lamb and Canberra. So 15,000 specimens, either on pins or on ethanol or a tag, that's, uh, that's taken us a long time. The worst part of them is writing spreadsheets, isn't it? <laughs> Jean has got the talk tonight. I'm going to retire into the back box. <laughs> and so Jean will have a talk about our garden and see if you can find something that we have in our garden you have not seen in your garden. <laughs> One of its possible. <laughs> we hope. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Started out with insects, and I wanted to know what they were. Where, you know, what were their, what were their names? And uh, just move a bit closer to the screen. Yeah. Okay. And initially, it was really difficult for me to get the information. I did a lot of internet search, but I found over over the last that was around about 2008. Over the years, it's got easier. More and more people are willing to share. At one time, uh, it seemed to be very difficult for people to share the information that they had, partly because the, um, the internet wasn't available and lots of other facilities weren't available. And it's become uh, much, much better now that we can actually share information with each other and it's, and it's all very important. So, we're, I'm gonna start out with a few butterflies that we have in our garden today and I'm not going to spend too much time on, on every picture. Um, this is just one of the wedge grass skippers. 
These come down from up north and most of you may have had them in your garden. They come through and um, they, they come down. Sometimes they get blown down by the wind or, or they just come through. Some years are better than others and you'll find that, um, that they may actually um, visit your garden. Uh, we've, we've had it and they just there and then they're gone. That's right. We've only had about... They did visitors about twice this year, this past, uh, from uh, end of summer and autumn. When we, 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 when we, we the people, they come and visit us, say hello, have a feed, and on they go again. So we have them on their way. When we're home and we see a butterfly in our garden, everything else stops, the cameras come out, <laughs> and we're out the front, <laughs> or out on the, at, the, at the butterfly to take a photo. These are very popular in our garden. They like, like uh, our lantana. We grow lantana especially for the butterflies. The butterflies in particular like lantana. Um, there is one of the lantanas which is Camara, which is a brightly coloured one, which is, a, is a classed as a weed. These are not classed as a weed here in Western Australia, but in other states they are. Uh, this is a soft one and it doesn't seem to produce seed for the birds to carry away. Vanessa Kershawii is seems to be one of the perhaps most common one in our garden, and uh, that comes and goes through the year. This one here also visits, and uh, this Lots. one's a male, showing its brand here. Um, the females don't have that brand. This is an interesting one. We we only get one or two visits from this a year. We don't have any. Um, milkweed plants in our place for them to feed on or, or lay their eggs for their caterpillars to live on. When we talk about butterfly food plants, we are referring to the food that the caterpillars or the larva eat, not what the butterflies eat. So these butterflies do feed on lantana and other plants around the garden, but the caterpillars, the larva or the caterpillars do not feed on that. They need uh, things like um, mistletoe and sandalwood, that's right. Yeah. Hard so to we find. don't have any of those. Always hard to find them with the, their, when their wings are open. Oh. They always have their, they're always, they're always closed up, aren't they? So we're fortunate this year to have um, two different ones come in, a male and a female, mm. and they're quite different between the two of them. Um, and these come through. We, uh, there's an area just down the road from us that used to have lots and lots of that um, milkweed, milkweed duck duck bush, and they, they grow their, their larvae on that and then they come through. So the, the larva that I've got there did not come from our place but down the road. Then of course everybody has <laughs> their cabbage wine. <laughs> we don't mind because we're not growing any um, veggies <laughs> at the moment. Yeah. We used to chase them around and try and deal with them, but now we don't. This is one of the little blues, little common ones. Now this one here is an interesting one. This is a uh, lemon migrant, and once again, you probably have that coming around in your, your property. And um, every year for the last five years, we have these coming back in because that tree is a food plant for them. And by food plant means that they actually lay their eggs on the plant and have the larva on it. Now this one here, this is the tree mark, and she's laying eggs. And she lays the eggs on the young leaves. These are the young leaves here, and these are older leaves. I'll show you why she, she lays there. This is the different stages. The eggs over the over that side and are long and thin and have ridges down them. They change colour as they age and you get their caterpillars, their little larvae deforming up inside and they, they just fatten up a little bit. And then their larvae hatch out, emerge. And they live on the light green leaves, the young leaves. And they're a little bit easier to see. They eat holes in the, in the leaves. And it's interesting to see that the ants come down and the, the holes, around the holes, there's a little sap comes out and the ants will chase the sap and drink the sap but not attack the larva, which is, which is really nice because ants can be a real nuisance. As the pupa 
So as the as the larvae grows up, it changes shape. It has five five forms, mm. so five stages. And as it gets older, it changes colour, it gets darker green, and it gets lines on it. And I think the next stage, which we didn't see, has a dark line. And um, mm -hmm. so that, that was interesting. I have wanted to find on our tree a, a pupa. pupa. I cannot find it. Our tree is probably seven metres high. And I cannot find it. I've looked and looked and looked. And I've seen photos of these um, pupa and they are the same colour as the leaves on the plant mm -hmm. and they blend in so well. I have never seen them. I was looking the other day because the, the uh, lemon migrants have been around again. And we had one year, it, um, they came in early. We had, sorry, I'm moving around. That's right. We had um, three different lots appeared to have um, babies, you know, they emerged, lay more eggs and go through the larva stage again and emerge again. So it seemed to be three. This year, the flowers were earlier than the butterflies arrived. Now, the, the, it's interesting that the flowers, the butterflies do not feed at all from the flowers of this particular plant, which is the Cassius fistula. And um, they, they do not feed from the flowers at all, but they will feed from the lantana in the garden. They love that. They'll come in and fly down on, on the purple uh, lantana and the yellow lantana, but not, not the yellow flowers of this plant. This plant um, very rarely, oh, there it is there, you can see. And it has, um, they can vary in colour, they can be quite dark, the male also has a brand mark on the outside of the wing. The upper side, once again, these are also a butterfly that lands and keeps its wings together and very rarely opens it up. So it's quite a trick to, to get a photo with its wings open. And I believe sometimes the white can be bigger or smaller and they all vary in slight colour. But these can vary from darker. There's two types of these yellow ones. They're not two types, that's the wrong term. Some are a darker colour and some are light colour, so there's two, the light one and the dark one. All the same, but variation. Then we have these. These come at, uh, in the, when the light is uh, not too strong, and they like the morning and the evening. And occasionally, if we have an overcast day, they'll be around all day, and they're very skittish, very skittish, until that near the end of the season, then they settle down a bit. These are fruit piercing moths. That's a moth, a moth. We've gone on to moths. <laughs> These are big and they flutter through and you think, oh, what's that? And then it lands on the ground and you think, where's it gone? And you look down amongst, it's landed amongst the leaves. The camouflage of these is actually really quite good. And they look like a, a broken leaf um, or a, a leaf that's starting to go off and change color from its autumn, autumn home. But it does, um, I'll just go back to that. Right, um, yeah, so we did have, one year we had, when we had these, we had tomatoes in the garden every morning. We'd come, we'd wake up and we had some nice fresh tomatoes ready to pick. And they would have a pierce mark from the top to the <coughs> bottom. I don't know whether it was actually those, but I presume it was those. And the tomatoes were inedible. So. <coughs> this is one um, that... That you may see. Okay, you had the same problem. Good to tomatoes. Yeah. 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 Okay. So these uh, these are one of the most common. Uh, I suppose well, that's what the records say. It's most one of the most common moths. But there's millions of moths. Lots of moths. Very pretty underneath. And everybody knows these. Now this one. Probably got that one at your place right now. Mm -hmm. the, um, Black and white tiger moth, they call them. That's a common name. They're generally, uh, in our area, they're generally this color, not black and white, but in some areas they are black and white. So we had the, the la, um, larvae on the tree, on the lim on the Cassie's fistula tree, and you see the eggs there. And you can see them actually eating the uh, shells <coughs> of, the, of the eggs after they had emerged. And they eat the furry caterpillars. 
and I can't, <coughs> sorry. These are the fer fairy caterpillars and they are the food for the coloured cuckoo. Mm -hmm. And we were fortunate to get uh, photos of the coloured cuckoo sharing one with his mate standing up sort of on the left hand, who's the male, bringing in a um, caterpillar caterpillar for his mate and then he they had a bit of tug of war and then he left and she bashed that bashed the um, caterpillar against the tree until she could actually leave the skin behind and eat a bit in the middle. So, some moths around our place. Now this one, you've been talking about rain moths. <laughs> this one here we have them come out in our backyard. We don't have very much uh, in our backyard anymore. We used to have fruit trees, but we found that you can only eat so much fruit. And then the uh, termites got into the trees and the tree got old and all that sort of thing. So we didn't replace them. So we have a, a blank backyard. Full of weeds. Full of weeds. <laughs> <laughs> and these emerged. We have, we have a wandu tree out in the back, right down in the far corner. And uh, these emerge every year. I haven't got the proper the species name of that one yet. And Paul. Might be out of the backyard. Okay, yeah. I have Might tried in the past, there. but I think there's more information about them the now. So they they come up, leave a hole. Um, that one's about that long. And they leave their, their casing on the ground. So, um, and so they're, they're interesting. I have tried to go out and watch them emerge, um, and the best, you have to go out in the rain, and, <laughs> and the rain can come at any time, and you never know what time of the night, so one night I, I listened, 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 and I heard the rain, I got up and I went out and I waited for about half an hour out in the rain with an umbrella, <laughs> but no, no show, but in the morning when I came out, of course, they had come after I had been out, <laughs> and so... One of those things, I'll have to get out there one day or put up a night light because we very rarely see the, the moths at all. We only see the holes and the and the, yeah, the, the caves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they um, are. Now this is not a moth. Even though it's called a moth fly, this is one of the little tiny um, flies that you'll get in your bathroom or you'll see it around on the fence or whatever. And they're quite small, and you'll see big drinking stores there. And um, they're not not a bad thing to have unless you've got too many of them. It's mm. very, I don't know, I've never seen too many of them. There's usually only one or two at a time. This one here is another little one. This is another uh, moth fly. That one's only about two mils long, and we <coughs> photographed that one night. We put out a, a night sheet on a on a wall and on a light on us and then spent the next three or four hours photographing everything that came in which is a nice way of doing it in your backyard so but sometimes if you don't know your neighbours very well it's probably a good idea to let them know that you do these strange things in the night who <laughs> 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 will ask you what were you doing last night with all the lights on well we go and photograph insects in our yard at night <laughs> interesting flies for those of you who know I like flies. Fred likes flies. He's learned to like flies. He didn't like them initially, but he's learned to like them. And we have some very interesting flies in our yard. And these are part of the Lawsonidae family. And um, this one here is an undescribed one. And uh, I have a number of people, uh, one of the fellows from the Canberra students, PhD people, asking uh, could we send them some so that they could actually put them into their study program. Uh, they get very busy over there, so we haven't heard back yet on that one. This one's here, little tiny. I always think of being a bent back thing. How yeah. does it fly with such bent wings? And um, these are love these, with their stripes, their racing stripes. And, and this one here's got his mouth out. He's just cleaning his, his uh, proboscis. He's been there. Uh, use their proboscis to stab on the plants that, and and in other things to get their food, they suck it up through their, through their sponge. Of course, flies are pollinators. Very important thing to have in our, in our gardens. They help with the pollinating, and you can see there 
I wasn't going to put a name on that one. I can never, like there's a few of them and they all hard to work them out, I reckon. Mm -hmm. But we also had this uh, Calendromyia that come in and um, they come in every year that are taken in and they come in and they can actually be quite aggressive to the other flies. If they in a little daisy, we grow daisies um, in our garden, especially for the flies, the flies love them. And sometimes they'll adopt a flower and they'll walk around, walk around, eating out of all the little flowers that are in the middle there. And you can have a look at the daisy later on on there um, to see all the little flowers. You've probably seen them anyway, but. Um, and they can actually chase the other flies away that come to visit. But there it is. I just thought I'd show you the male has the um, orange face and the female has the white face. They're both about the same size. So um, it's interesting having them both there and being able to watch them in your garden. Now, this is uh, part of the Califruidae group, which is the little ones. These are generally tend to be smaller and brown. And I was out the back one day and I happened to have my phone with me, which is fairly general. Um, and I noticed that one of the flies, the big one, was sitting there and this little fellow came up to her and he put his face right in her face and then he started waving his wings around as fast, as fast, as fast as anything. And then she was just cleaning herself and ignoring him. And, and all of a sudden he whacked her across the face. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, huh. Oh. Anyway, she shook his, her head and then she turned around and turned her back on him. <laughs> <laughs> and it wouldn't bother him, he still was at face. <laughs> then she turned around and he sort of did it. So it often happens to the male, they get that good. <laughs> <very nice, don't laughs> <they? laughs> yeah. yeah. The size dimorphism is he's, he's very tiny compared yeah. to the female. He is yeah. very tiny, yeah. yes, but that was interesting to see. Yeah. Uh, are they all, all the males tiny like that or is he a runt? I really don't know because um, we don't have a real lot of those come into the garden. But, but I just thought it was really interesting. I, I did have, I have a video of that happening, um, but I didn't like to stretch the evening out too long. And, um, but it was really interesting. Eventually uh, a big breeze came along and, and she flew away and then he flew away. So uh, that was it. These little um, fruit flies or they call them grass flies, they live in the grass, their larvae eat grass, and they can be by the dozens up in the tops of the trees. So they're very pretty um, when you get close. You know, see these little tiny things on, on your plants in your garden. We also get bee flies that come and visit our garden, which mm -hmm. I think one of my favorite flies mm -hmm. is, is bee flies, or bombletiae. They're really, really lovely flies. They're gentle. They, they sometimes, sometimes will sit and let you photograph them, and other times won't. Um, and so I was pleased to see these here. The mint. This one here is sitting on the mint flowers. We let our mint go to seed, go to flower when it, when it comes to flower. Back back years ago, when the mint started to flower, I cut the flower, cut the flowers mm -hmm. off to keep the mint growing. These days, come on, mint, flower, flower. Because <laughs> all the insects love it. The wasps and the bees, native bees, the, um, the flies, everything loves to feed on it. And much of the other native things are. Jane will probably mention the parsley. They, the parsley, we let the parsley go to seed, which they go to flower. Here are your parsley herbs, and they have their gorgeous flowers, and the insects love those. Uh, it's really, yeah, really worth leaving, flowers. you know, if you're growing parsley, it's really worth leaving it to go to, to flower and just leave it there until it, till the seeds fall off and then you've got lots of plants come up in the next year ready for more more insects and more things to do. This this is the uh, little seaside daisy and this is the marguerite daisy. So we have different variety of daisies in our garden just to help keep them there. These are some of the... Um, different flies that come in and sit on the leaves. These are sunning themselves, never seen them feeding, only seen them once or twice. These are all soldier flies. Um, and that's a, um, a Perididae, a, a stiletto fly as well. Now this one, tree sitters. Yeah, tree sitters. We had, we had a big um, gum tree in our backyard 
and it's, it's a tree that really belongs in a big forest. It's grown very big. And on a really hot day, it was so lovely to go down the back and to look at the smooth bark of this tree and see what was sitting on the bark of the tree. This one here used to come in the evening. This is a pair of a day, a stiletto fly. It used to come in every night, it's a large fly, and it used to sit about that high. So if I wanted to photograph it, I had to get on a stool and stand on it. And it came in for three or four nights or longer, and, and it was just beautiful to see. And it always sat on the sunny side of the tree. Sorry, David. Do you want to shift the goat? There's another seat over there. And it used to sit up a certain way on the sunny side of the tree. It was really hot and it always sat upwards. It always faced upwards. These little fellas here, Galena Galena, are grass tree flies. They call them grass tree flies because they sleep in the fronds of the grass trees. They also, we've also seen them out in the bush where they actually lay their eggs in the flower stalks of the developing grass tree flowers in the flower stalk. And so they're, they're very interesting. That one's a male, female, it's a slightly different end of the abdomen. But these used to sit at the base of the tree on the sunny side and they used to sometimes just walk around the base of the tree about this far from the ground. And they used to row their way around the, yeah. wherever they went, moving their arms and their, or their legs. Yep. Interesting, the little neo fella, the, uh, you know, the Xanthoria, uh, if you like, I can't call each other again, but the grass tree, the old uh, beaver, the weevils used to like getting into the, uh, the head of the flowers before it flowered, and you have all this green mass up the stem. And the weevils get in and go go like mad and drill holes in them. Drill the holes in them. And these little fellows seem to come in and get the sap after the, the weevils have been in. Oh, uh, okay. And they seem to follow up the, uh, each other. And so we saw one, you'd see the others invariably. Canberra always asked, asked us for some more of those. They didn't have many in their collection. So would we catch them, those little well, the, those little The original nip? description of these, they had six. They had six flies. So we have collected extra of them for them and sent them over for and and for West Australian Museum as well. We we share insects between West Australian Museum and the CSIRO and a couple of other areas. So, so have you seen a sexual display, male and female, in a bar? I have only yeah. the semaphore, mm. wing waving at each other. No, I haven't, no. Right. No, I haven't seen it. And I haven't seen them mating, no. Right. No. These are more, more tree sitters. Um, while we had our big uh, citronella tree, this, this used to come in every year and sit there for on the tree and it would visit every day, once again in the afternoon, and it would sit there and it would do this rowing thing with its front feet and just sit there. And um, it was just... So lovely because they're quite large, and it's actually a, a, we saw it for the first time this year on a fungi out, out in the bush. And the, I know I've known that it's a fungi fly, but I've never seen it on a fungi until this year. So it's, I was so excited when I saw it this year on a, on a fungi. These these were on on our wandu tree, and on the wandu tree on a hot day you'll find on a really hot day these are forty degree days. So if, if you've got a, a tree, a smooth bark tree on a hot day, go down and have a look and see what's happening. Um, because yeah. it's about the middle of the day and for it to be when the sun's shining on the bark part of the tree. It was interesting to see lots and lots of little tiny parasitic wasps, little tiny ones, two or three mil. And it had this, this fellow here, he's only about three mil too. And he walked right up the middle of these. And as he walked up the tree trunk, all the wasps went, all petted off. Mm. Then later on, I said to someone, that was strange. And they said, no, not strange. This fellow parasitizes the wasps. Oh, and I thought, oh, of course, what can I do that? Some of flies parasitize wasps and bees and, and other insects. And so 
they actually lay their eggs, it's kind of a group thing, they lay their eggs on the bees or the wasps and um, the larvae actually goes into the into the insect and they can live inside the insect till they're ready to emerge and then they mm -hmm. emerge. The, the insect can be not damaged very much until the uh, larvae of theirs gets too big for them. So it's, it's yeah, it's very interesting, um, but it's a gruesome life out there. <laughs> This one here is one of the long-legged flies, the little dog and pig, um, and that's the Metadera species. Aha, uh -huh, this one. This was um, a parasite. This was a fly that was introduced. We don't naturally have these in Australia. These are feather-legged flies. We don't naturally have them here. There were evidently there were two different species of these released in Australia and um, it seems that the experiment wasn't very successful. It was to try and um, help kill off the uh, green vegetable bug. And um, by doing that, these flies lay their egg on the, on the uh, green vegetable bugs and then the yeah. larvae go into the green vegetable bugs and kill them. Yeah. So that was, that were the, they were the vegetable bugs, you know, the, and uh, the green bug ate, ate up uh, commercial crops and vegetables and a bit of biological cons uh, control. control with these Would be feather legged flies. But obviously, I don't think the feather legged flies worked hard enough or something. But, yeah. And, and uh, they were apparently released in the eastern states. And what they're doing in our garden is anyone's name. But we they visited about uh, three years running. We didn't see any last year, only usually one or two, but they're. Quite a cute sort of fly but with their feather legs, and they sort of, you know, quite nonchalant little critters. I did have someone question me whether they they might impact on the local hemiptera, because how can they tell the difference between one hemiptera and another? So in some ways, I'm not sorry that they haven't proliferated, uh, because I, we don't want our natives yeah. disappearing. Yeah. Yeah. There's a Phanagastrian wasp, Catrosalcus basalis, that was also introduced to Australia to control the green vegetable bug, mm -hmm. and it does attack our native Phanatomids, including the predatory shield bugs, which would themselves be controlling pests if the wasp wasn't killing them. Oh, okay. Right, okay. Did you mention the white egg on its face? Yes, I did mention it. Yeah, okay, yeah, good. So we, did, we had a couple of these with, um, connected with the eggs on it. One had two eggs and, and the other had one. But um, we didn't get great hordes of them. Aha, uh -huh. hoverfly. Who doesn't like hoverfly? <laughs> um, these are always a favourite. This one here, the, one of the bigger ones. Spotty face ones. Spotty face ones. Yeah, you saw the spotty face ones. This one here. This was interesting. It's the first time we've ever seen any insects sit on the vinca. These are vinca vincas that come out in the summertime, and You've never seen them, they're pretty. They're, you know, you have white flowers, you have pink flowers. They're really yeah. toxic plants. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And this one's actually feeding out of the centre of it. It's the first time ever. <laughs> Do you get the little tiny serigias? <laughs> These? I'm, Jen, Jen will let, I think she'll let me tell you this tiny little story. Can you see those two? How can these blighters mate while they're s maintaining position out there in space? Just hovering in one spot, him and her, in loving embrace. But I tell you what, don't try doing it. <laughs> you have, Fred? <laughs> no. <laughs> this one, what's interesting with this shot is that he's doing all the work in flying. I won't mention the other part. Um, he's got his head, his arms over her eye there, and then he's holding her wings down and still. She cannot fly at that stage <laughs> because she's holding her wings down. And yeah. He's flying and they, they're interesting to watch because they often sit in one spot flying. Maybe it's just easier to fly up and down in the one spot than try and move around. And often they do move while they're, they're there, but that, that was an interesting shot to catch a little like that. This one's a, a Serifia, which is a tiny, tiny hoverfly. Often lay in the teaks in, in uh, wetlands and uh, still water, mm. and then the larvae need the water to do that. You sell the, the aphids, don't you? Aphids. Not all, not all, um, not all hoverflies eat aphids, mm -hmm. but um, many of them do. These 
book on Ben's big brother is gonna <coughs> this one here on the whole page about this particular one. It's another relatively small hoverfly. And they come in and they're never there for very long, so you have to be quick, you know, get to get your camera out and see them before they disappear. Um, here's a pair of mating. I always like to get a, a mating pair because then you can see the size difference and see the differences between the males and the females. And you can see there that uh, there's quite a bit of difference in size. That here, the females came into our mint, uh, into our parsley. Our parsley was just absolutely covered with aphids. There was no way that we could eat it. We couldn't wash out the aphids, so I didn't worry about that. I just let them be particularly when I saw the hoverflies getting into it, the um, lady beetles coming in and laying their eggs. And as far as I know, these are the eggs, the long, thin eggs of those. And then here's the larva. This is a ho um, hoverfly larva coming to eat an aphid on a, on a thistle plant. So um, very important. To, um, let them stay in the garden and help you out because aphids are a pain. Have you seen the wasp that parasitizes the horrified fly larva as well? Um, no. Not apparently, no. You're a wasp man. Yeah. I've, just, I've seen all the, the, whole, like, the whole ecosystem on one dandelion once for three. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the plant, the aphids, the whole flies, and the really havoc wasp going after the three old fly larvae. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, no, I haven't seen that yet. So I'll, I'll keep an eye out. <laughs> now another, um, this is a, another hoverfly, a little one that looks like a native bee. They hover like a native bee, they move like a, ho a native bee, but they're a hoverfly. This one hangs around the rubbish bin, the compost, compost bin, and generally lays its eggs there and, and likes the rotting material there. This one is not a hoverfly, this one's called a small-headed fly in Acre, Ferret, and um, they are known to lay millions of eggs when they lay them. It is a different sort than this particular one that, and it'll lay it, millions of eggs all over your, over your clothesline, so I haven't seen that ha happen at home. When this one's been around, we end up with all these eggs over the inside of our fences on both sides of their property, but not on the other people's property. I don't understand. It's on one side of the fence, but not on the other. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, these are these are lovely. They're about a ten mil long, quite a small fly. Ooh. Oh, Judy, can I tell you a little interesting story about bloat flies? Oh, I was at Baraka Nature Reserve. I was yeah. walking on a track. I think with Jack. And so, what uh, group does a bloat fly come from? What a bloat fly. Acrocerus is another name for small. Oh, okay. Headed. I wasn't aware of that. Okay. Do you, yep. They look bloated. Yes, they do. Yes, <laughs> they, they do. do. Anyway, I'm walking along and I see Maratus mungaich, a peacock spider. Okay. I look down at it and it looks odd. It looks ah, bloated. Exactly. And then uh, I rang up Jürgen Otto and I said, Jürgen, I've got this strange looking Maratus mungaich. Uh, do you want me to send it over to Sydney? And he said, oh, David, uh, I think maybe you keep it and see what comes out. And um, so I did. And uh, unfortunately, uh, so I woke up one morning, the jars in front of my computer, there is a dead Maratus mungaich, and there is a pupa on a bit of damp tissue. But unfortunately, it didn't go right through because mold attacked oh, okay. my mold. But he had a record of an eastern state species of Yes, yes, I remember that now when you yeah. mentioned that, yes. Mm. Yes, so that's interesting, isn't it? Because we do have the Maratus in our backyard, so. This one here is, is another fly. It's got lots of flies. Um, and this is a, a goldmidge, and the goldmidges have hair on their wing. You can see the hair around the edge of that. It's only a three mil fly. Um, Unfortunately, our property seems to be drying up more and more and with roadworks and all sorts of things happening, we're getting less water on the property, but um, there's not a lot we can do about that. So they, um, 
the gold make is uh, gold make the cold gold make for resin that they actually help cause the galls on leaves and things around the property. So um, yeah, that's what they are. Ah, we're onto bees. I thought I'd start out with honeybee. Honeybees are useful for making honey, and our neighbours have honeybees in, in the backyard, so we have them too in our backyard, but not in a hive, we don't have the hive. But it's useful to help with the pollination of some things. These are a lovely bee to have. This is the uh, cone wasted bee. Notice I'm chickening out saying that name. <laughs> And this is the male. They have the um, little bumps back on the back, and the females have the pointed, pointed back to them. They're a lovely bee to have to have to visit. We have mega coil bees, and we've had this one here, which is a, also a, a sweet bee. Native bees are really, really sweet. Now we've been through the through the hotel, the hotel stage, the track, call them. Whatever you like. Oh, bee traps. Uh, some people call them bee traps. Yeah. Yeah. So we set up we set up some of these and we were given it as a gift and uh, so we put it up on the post and put some extra that they the bee one the, the hotel that we got <coughs> really big big pipes and said, Oh, they're too big, so we'll put some other bamboos inside. And sure enough it wasn't long before the bees come along, the native bees started coming along and, and building and first of all, with the little tiny bees, and, and they finished building, and, and then the mega car started coming along, and and it was so interesting watching all these things. Who's got a, who's had this? Who's done this? Yeah, yeah we got sick of uh, we got sick of doing that anymore. So our bees, we let them go free range at last again. <laughs> you know, sort of. We, we've got, we've got the craze was good while it started. We got we got. Everybody had to have a bee hotels, and so we, we down. We, we, we didn't take it down though. We left it. There. Yeah, we only, we only left it. We still about six or eight. We had just left one that was there, and the wasps was at one year, and, and bees came again, and so on. So, but the wasps um, came in. The wasps came in off season to the to the bees. This one here's the uh, mega coral uh, bee monstrosum. It's one of the big ones. And then we had little ones. We had a whole range of different bees come and do it um, on the mega coral. So it's very interesting watching them. Some finish their nests off with chewed leaves. You can see this one here has got chewed leaves. The monstros came in with chewed leaves. And it was interesting watching them bring in the different supplies for their little tubes as they came in and filled them up. Others came in with resin. And um, it was interesting we just put new bark chips down in our garden, the bees came back with bark chips, chewed up bark chips and helped um, finish off their nests that way. So it was really interesting that the bees didn't mind us standing this far away from them while we photographed them as they came in and did their, their little work. Very hard workers, never stopped um, all day and uh, so it was really interesting. This one here, we have had them, was this is a leaf cutter bee, and uh, the male down the bottom there, the female in the middle and up here. And here she is carrying a, a leaf, rolled up leaf, to go down to one of the um, holes left by the moths. So um, it, uh, those moth holes get used by so many different insects. Oh, this, um, so the bees, the spiders, the, the wolf spiders love them. I've had other... Um, other spiders down there as well, um, following them. So it's actually we're quite happy to leave our backyard relatively open. This one was interesting. The leaf cutter bee been busy on our on our um, cassia fistula, chewing holes. There's the male, the female, and the male. Fred, what can I you tell about that bit? You can. There were. We all out. We let us we let our bees go free range, and you see them around trying to find holes in my stone walls around the garden, and, and poking around. And I thought I'd, I thought I'd take pity on them. I got out my electric drill and I drill some more holes for them in the concrete on the stone walls. You know, and they they certainly came to the challenge, but at the same time, 
they're these little fly lizards were roaming around and the more holes I bored for the more bees, there were more lizards roaming around to eat them. <laughs> and so it worked backwards. Some doesn't pay to interfere with nature too far, is it? One of the interesting things with these leaf cutter bees, um, do all leaf cutter bees have the not modified. all of them, no. Many do. Many of them do, but yeah. not all of them. Okay, they have a modified front arm. Can you explain that, Terry? Um, yeah, they're expanded and they have different patterns. Um, they've been observed to cover the eyes of females during mating. Mm -hmm. So it may um, subdue the female during the mating process. Thank you. Very, very interesting to see. Could you see this bee with a strange... <laughs> these these are the um, lovely ones to have in the garden. This is this is one that comes in uh, and is there for. Actually, this one's really interesting because it's a big, slightly bigger than these. And bigger than the blue bandit. Bigger than the blue bandit, yeah. And it works so late in the evening. We were having a work at about five o'clock in the afternoon. Whereas the uh, blue band bees were finished voluntarily by then. Mm -hmm. And so it was interesting seeing them come and go. They were away for a little time and then coming back and feeding on the geese milk. I love that. Wasps. I'm going to have to hurry. <laughs> these, um, these are the yellow ones. You'll see that they've got the yellow antennae. Paper these wasps. Have, paper wasps. These have a darker antennae, but they are not the European wasps. That one there is the European wasp. That's that's a nasty fellow, and we had that in our in our area. And I noticed that after that had been, we had a, a really our numbers, our insect numbers were way down. That thing was really not miserable. This one's a spider wasp. Had some more wasps. A little parasitic wasps, and this one here is parasitizing a gorm on the tree and you'll see here that this is her uh, ovipositor oh, yeah. and she's pushing it down here. This is not her ovipositor, this is her shield to protect her ovipositor mm -hmm. while she's out flying around. And I have seen bees parasizing um, praying mantis eaters. Mm -hmm. um, so, mm -hmm. And I thought, oh no, how horrible. And now I thought, oh, well, you can't have your garden overrun by praying mantis either. So <laughs> you've got to let them be a balance. Some of the little parasitic wasps can be very pretty. Mm -hmm. The little male down the bottom um, left hand side and then the other funny shaped one there. Um, really, really lovely. We have had in the past a blank's nest. These are two that were um, had wings. And like I say, so the, they were leaving their uh, nest to start a new one. Notice the male has very short elbows, <laughs> whereas the female has a very long elbow. Yeah. And uh, it was interesting to watch these. Um, one day I was down the back watching the um, bull ants and this bull ant was picking up stones and it would run over to the hole of one of the moths and it would drop it down and it would run back and then it would come back up and look to see if there was anything in the hole. <laughs> so I'm not sure what it was checking it out for, but it was just so cheeky to watch it drop something down the hole and then run back so it didn't get eaten. Because that was where the spiders lived. So ants, more ants, and beetles. We have beetles as well. These these have been nice to have them come in. Um, have you had any this year? And this one, of course. <laughs> this one's always a favourite. And here's the male and the female. Uh, the female was sitting on a branch, waiting, and the male came in and he flew around and around and around. And it took 10 minutes before he could find her. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and that's rather interesting because he's got this lovely antennae that can smell, but it took a while to actually get that did they mate after that? They did mate after that, and yes, they, they did. Did they, they find them died? Or? Uh, they just mated and then I left them to it. Okay, yeah, well, one, um, I think the uh, male died when I took a video of that. Like, okay. after. Right. Yeah. 
We have beetles. Rose beetle. More beetles, a rose beetle. This one came in with some um, chook manure that we purchased and then they were there the following year. It's actually quite a big rose beetle because rose yeah. beetles can be small and that was quite a large one. And the following year we had one or two but not, not after that. So occasionally we find this one. This one here, these are here most uh, often, often, not every year and they come and go. Lady beetle. These are a, a wonderful thing. Everybody loves lady beetles and <laughs> eat their uh, eat the aphids. I think that's an introduced one, but um, that's okay for me. Um, once again on the parsley, that year when we had lots of aphids, uh, that the um, yeah. and then we have these two who've come in. I haven't only seen those for the last couple of years. And these things, we, I could go all night. This is a beautiful insect to see. And, um, and I'm told that this is possibly a larvae of that. Um, and then we have the boxamantids, little boxamantids, the twine, twine little fellas. And then we have parasitic hemiptera. You can see this parasite. Horizon of Hemiptera, once again there, this is cicada, but it's still a Hemiptera. The cicadas, this is a big cicada, and it sings the most beautiful song in the evenings and can go all night. Um, it sounds like a cicada did, but it's actually a, a cicada. This one is one of the TikTok um, ones, and they're much smaller than that. Both live on our Wandu tree. These are some little hoppers, I'll just race through these, that, that live on our, this one uh, often sitting on the orange tree rather than on the wandu tree. That one's on the wandu tree um, at a certain time of the year, November. Uh, you can go down and see that one. It's only one or two, um, but never very many. These are on the wandu tree. The spittle bug, um, as a larvae, uh, as a larva, it lives inside the spit, and then when it emerges, it looks like that. Phillips and Lerps. So this is a spider or something. I'm, I'm hurrying through. Um, I've only seen this once. Who keeps those? Have you heard this still the young fellow mm -hmm. here? There was a group of young fellows from the group here had, had those as pets, a number of people had these as pets. This one was in our uh, wonder tree, 15 centimetres long. I went back the next day and I haven't seen it since. It was only the one year, one vision of it. Dragonflies, a number of different types of dragonflies. And cockroaches. So the male, the female carries her, the sticker with her and um, then the babies. The babies, the nymphs can be really, really pretty at the different stages of them. Some of the native cockroaches are just pretty, aren't they? Mm -hmm. This one here is, is the first one, definitely the first one. Uh, David Renz, who's a, one of the cockroach people in Australia, was really pleased when he saw those photos. They can live in your house, they will occasionally live in your house, they prefer not to. So if you see them in your house, just shoot them back out. They prefer to live outside. They've actually established in another country. Have they? <coughs> the town of Gisborne in New Zealand. Oh. Where they're known yeah. as the Gisborne cockroach. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, there's two of these. Um, there's another one which is very similar to that, but it has a very fat tibia. Sure. So much wider tibia. Ah, oh, you've probably got these in your garden and never seen them because they're all so tiny. These are only a few mils long. There's a number of different varieties there. And again, these were uh, floating on a, a little area of water that got caught. And these fellas love eating them. So we've seen them even in your mouth. We have these in our backyard as well. So we really like that. More. This is the the um, 
the lesson three, this is the one that can become a, a pest in people's um, crops in the lesson. We have um, some barrel clover plants. Bear clover. Bear clover, barrel clover, clover plants, and these will just suck holes all over the over it, and uh, it doesn't really worry us, so we we, I, we let them be. So and then we get these other types, and there's there's a few more types of uh, little little fellas. They're all little kinds. Of this is uh, something we've actually brought here for you to have a look at tonight. You can have a look at these fellas later. Some of you would already know it. You get these little nests that they yeah. fold up the leaf mm -hmm. and this this one here is actually rather interesting there's one here which is oops there's no water in that so on this branch here there's a little tiny one and i found that the little tiny ones seem to be inhabited by the males and the bigger houses this one here's been opened and something opens them up, I suspect the cock of the 28 carrots and eats the spider. Uh, but the little tiny, this is the male one, and it's only three mils long. But the female is, is, is five mils long. And here she is building a, her house. Who's and seen that in the gum tree? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, so you've seen it all. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing how they can get a leaf and pull the end around and sew it up to make a letterbox. I watched one, uh, I spent quite a few hours watching one do that and it was a thunderstorm weather. But I could never work out how she pulled it all together because she did that in the night. So it's not like this one here is really interesting because um, I used to go out and see these splotches of sticky stuff or what looked like sticky stuff on the leaf. And the insects used to come in and, um, and it appeared to be that these ants, uh, the ants coming in, and this one here uh, has actually got a little gob of spit in its mouth. And I watched this spider with this gob of spit and the ants came in closer and closer and the spider put its arms out and it just ever so slowly. And as soon as the, um, and it, when the, and got to its mouth, it let, let it eat more of its liquid out of it. And all of a sudden it caught it and raced inside the house with the ant. I presume it ate it, <laughs> but I don't know. But it was interesting to watch. So here's some of the other things. You can see the spider leaf eating a native bee. And this little fella playing dandy games. Um, I've seen flies and a number of other things. So they're quite important, important things. So as your garden change, changes, your insect life changes and each year we'll see something new. There's always something new, something else happening. And uh, the birds help the, uh, you know, keep the insects under control, which is not a bad thing. You get some plants, these are our big daisy blower plants, more daisies, we've got lots of daisies. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with daisies. They're good, they're very good. <laughs> And if you have a look, you might find some strange looking creatures. And this is our one big tree. We have a, our neighbor has a big uh, bush and apple tree behind. So um, I haven't done or got all the names by myself. We've had a lot of help from people. Terry, thank you, and uh, Brian. And I meant to put your name on Brian. <laughs> Sorry, thank you very much for your ID. When I asked, you're very kind. And, and uh, David, David Miles. And lots of other people uh, have helped with the naming of our, of our 